So I was playing Xbox with my friends the other night, and in between games of absolutely sweating my balls off as Kylo Ren in Battlefront 2, I came across something that was trending on Twitter that really caught my attention. Avatar 2. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. No way! But it seems as if the waiting is finally over, and it's time for us to actually feast our eyes and our hearts and dive deeper into the incredible and the majestic world of Pandora and the courageous and the resilient people of the Na'vi. But it all goes back to that fateful night of playing Xbox with my homies, and the immediate thing that I thought to myself was, who is asking for this? And when I asked my friends, and while waiting for them to give me an answer, we all started to come to the same conclusion. No one. Yeah. <laughs> for a film that came out in 2009 and made an absolutely ridiculous amount of money, I've never really seen a blockbuster movie of this magnitude have such high praise for when it first hit the theaters age this poorly. And for a movie this generic, I honestly thought that the studio was just going to ride into the sunset with the billions of dollars that it somehow managed to make, and then we would never hear from the world of the Navi again. But of course, as Hollywood goes, if there is money to be made, then shitty movies and lack of common sense will always prevail. Not a great plan. But if you're anything like me and only watched this movie for the first time all the way back in 2009, I highly doubt that you even remember the plot of the movie and what Avatar was even all about. So allow me to jog your memory, but don't worry mates, this one won't take long at all. Okay. As most space movies go, we start off with things not really looking too good for the human race as we travel our way through the depths of space, searching for resources to maintain our human survival, leading us to the planet of Pandora, an absolutely stunning planet with a lot of lush and colorful forests, big and immense bodies of water, rock glaciers that float around in the sky, mutated animals that are both fierce and intimidating as they are beautiful and friendly. What is going on? But the biggest problem that our humans face is that there is already a native species living here on the planet, the people of the Navi, a bunch of big smurfs with tails that happen to live in a larger than life tree that happens to be right on the resource that our humans need. It's a super huge coincidence that the big smurfs with tails don't even use the resource that the humans need, but happen to build their big tree settlement and big ass tree city on such a big mound of stuff that the humans happen to need. But instead of doing the bad human thing and just immediately coming in and taking the resources that we need with force and just creating another conflict that the humans would have to overcome, the big solution is to create artificially made smurfs with tails that our heroes would subconsciously connect to, to infiltrate the big tree and to learn more about the planet of Pandora and the Navi to create a more peaceful solution, a solution where maybe both parties can benefit from each other's unlikely appearance. Yeah. <laughs> we follow our generic protagonist number one, Jake Sully, a paralyzed war veteran that just happened to stumble his way onto the mission. See Jake Sully, which will be his artificial name throughout this video, seeing how they say it absolutely so many times throughout the movie, wasn't even supposed to be here. His original avatar was supposed to be piloted by his twin brother, but after being killed in the worst way ever in cinematic history, off screen, Jake Sully has to step up to the role of his brother, seeing how his avatar can only be controlled by the genetic code that it was made for. Like, okay, I'm sure that sounds right. That of course leads Jake Sully and his team of recon soldiers and researchers to the ground of Pandora to start their mission in hopes of having a more peaceful and diplomatic solution to the problem that they're facing. And as compelling as all of that sounds, a generic movie like this couldn't be so generic without a little taste of a laughable love interest. Natiri is a badass and sexy smurf with a tail that also happens to be a princess of some sort for the people of the Navi. And due to a chance spiritual leaf falling on her arrow as she was planning to kill Jake Sully and his team, she decides to take him into the big tree to learn more about her culture and the planet that she lives on. What the fuck? And with that sheer coincidence from the spiritual leaf, a romance starts to form between our human Jake Sully as he starts to genuinely take an interest and care about not only Natiri, but the Navi as a whole. And Natiri, the Navi warrior princess that starts to understand the inner workings of the mystery outsider that landed on her planet. But of course, that leads to our generic interpersonal conflict. See, the generic villain of our movie is a military war commander whose name I don't actually remember and didn't even care to look up his character name. So for the sake of this video, we're going to go in and call him Scar. Nope, not that one. Nah, still wrong. 
Come on, we're getting a little closer. Ah, there we go. He wants Jake Sully to spy on the Navi for some strange reason, as if this population of Smurfs with tails that live in a big tree and rely on the strengths of their bow and arrows actually pose a threat to the bombs and the airships that we, the humans, actually have, but okay. Which obviously leads us to the moral dilemma of who he's really working for and where his alliances truly lie. <laughs> Obviously, the rest of the movie plays out exactly how you're thinking. Natiri, the Navi, and even Jake Sully's own team inevitably find out about his betrayal to set up the redemption arc for Jake Sully to save the day. Scar decides to take the superior technology that us, the humans, actually have and attack the big tree of the Navi. Jake Sully's redemption arc is fulfilled by coming back in the nick of time because, you know, they only have bows and arrows, and joining the side of the Navi destroying the humans' tanks and ships, and bringing his decisive marine skills to the table to help the Navi win the fight for their planet. Jake Sully gets the girl and defeats his interpersonal rival, and the humans that wanted a diplomatic peaceful solution get to keep that by, I guess, just living in their artificial smurfs with tails forever. <laughs> Hi. Okay. What is going on? Again, it just goes back to the question that I asked my homies, and now I ask all of you. Who's asking for this movie, yet alone another four of them? Writing-wise, this movie is on the comprehension level of Disney movies like Frozen and Zootopia, which are both far better movies than this movie could ever hope to be. I understand the strong comparisons of this film to movies like Fern Gully, Pocahontas, and Dances with Wolves, but man, if you ask me to rank these movies in order with those four, who's choosing this one? Obviously, there's a bunch of more random things that happen in the movie, like when Ripley's character is dying, so the Navi bring her into the tree to download her consciousness forever into her avatar body, which obviously makes no sense, because, like, have you done this before? Are these not the first humans that you came in contact with? Are you used to downloading consciousness into other people? Because they all seem pretty surprised when they first found out about it. And our generic corporate leader that seems to have not a single shred of humanity left, even though we're meant to assume that humans are a dying species. So, you know, wouldn't you be a little bit more compassionate seeing the situation of your own species? Avatar made a heck of a lot of money. I'm sure this one is bound to make even more. But the more I've grown up and actually started to pay attention to the world around me, I started to realize that box office money doesn't always adequate to being a good film. We've had plenty of examples of this in even just the past five years. No, 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 no. And sadly, I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. But if you like the video, then make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, make sure you're in those comments making your opinions heard because this is just mine. And I'm always down to learn about yours because it definitely makes for a more interesting discussion. But now I'm kind of done with my rant. So goodbye and I'll see you in the next video.